Hello, this is Digital Trends Live. I'm Greg Nibbler. I appreciate everybody who's joining in. Wherever you are, if we uh, enjoy it, you want to hit that subscribe button because we bring you up to date with everything that's going on in technology. And it's now time to recap what has been happening this week because it's time for another edition of Tech Briefs where I am joined by Ken Young, the technology editor for Flipboard to talk about the big stories. Ken, always good to see you. Let's jump right into this here. So uh, some big things happening this week that are going to affect a lot of us going forward. And to start off, Let's talk about this Apple and Google partnership. We've known this has been going on for a while. That they've been working on an API, which essentially is the underlying tech for, for Android and iOS, to where they'd be able to communicate together, and using Bluetooth in this idea of contact tracing. Can you tell us a little bit more about the partnership and where we're at right now? Right. So uh, in terms of understanding where the where this pandemic, this coronavirus pandemic is is going uh, and, and as com as states start to try and reopen, as the world starts to kind of uh, jumpstart their economies, uh, the, there's a there's a push for more testing and, and, and pra to practice social distancing. So in terms of helping to figure out where this where these epicenters are happening, uh, where potential hotspots are going to be, uh, there's this notion there's this practice called this protocol called contact tracing that scientists have been have been using uh, and so with the ad obviously with technology there's a way to kind of really better understand uh, uh, to get uh, understand these trends and to get this data and so there the employees at both Apple and Google specifically uh, joined together uh, in the early weeks of, of April to kind of really see is there a way that they could use the operating systems to uh, to help uh, these health public health officials understand where uh, where this pandemic is being spread in the United States and and, and abroad. Uh, so and actually and this is uh, um, kind of pretty fascinating that this is started like early early uh, weeks of of April. And within uh, several weeks, now we have a, a, a beta public API that is accessible only to uh, health officials for them to build uh, apps that will be able to leverage the, the capabilities from within iOS and, and Android. Now, this is not going to be something that uh, independent developers, uh, like people from like whether it's Zoom or Facebook or or you know someone from uh, that's that, right. that an entrepreneur can can build off of. So this is going to be very uh, what they, what Apple and Google hope will or promise. Say this is going to be very limited to just uh, health officials and using uh, low energy Bluetooth. The the premise is that as you are walking through, uh, walking down the street, uh, it'll detect in nearby phones who have happen to have uh, volunteer. The, the owners have voluntarily said that they've come into contact with someone with coronavirus or them, they themselves have been uh, diagnosed with coronavirus, with COVID-19, um, then that information will be passed along to public health officials. So basically, this is all supposedly anonymous. Yeah. Google and Apple have said they've, they've, they've beefed up their privacy concerns. Obviously, this is a big thing for people. Uh, the concern is uh, uh, not only privacy, but how can governments use this to to track in individuals? Is this going to get rid of of uh, of our of our in, of our our rights, our freedoms? Um, so far, you know, there's nothing that merits that case. I mean, this is just a public API right now, and we got a little bit ways to go. Uh, but there's a lot of other countries, a lot of governments, yeah. a lot of com companies that are also experimenting experimenting with this. And as you start to get back to work, uh, you know, who knows whether your your own employer will mandate that you, uh, sub uh, you know, voluntarily enroll in this, you know, in contact tracing to protect them. IBM is using it within some of their comp uh, some of their offices. So yeah. could this actually be a, a bigger thing as opposed to a voluntary thing? Right, and I think that's something that you know. That's why it's important for people to know about this, that this is happening right now. This partnership is going. Germany's actually announced that they're going to be going along with the Google and Apple one. They're still working out some of the details, but you could definitely see when it comes down to local governments, you know, will they uh, will they adopt it and, and work on it? And then will people download it and use it? And I think that that big thing there that I've talked to people about, too, is just security, 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 security. Nobody trusts anybody. Uh, I would think actually with Google and Apple both being involved, um, extreme competitors probably holding each other accountable. I think that's a good thing when it comes to security because neither one of them is going to want to mess that up uh, because the other one will just pounce on them, I would think. But yeah, it's, it's, that's the whole other issue too. So as it rolls out, you know, as things develop really quickly, and this has developed very quickly, we'll have to see what happens. You know, two weeks from now, this could be something that's rolling out to local governments where we have the apps available to download and but it's, it's possible. 
And so we'll have yeah. to see where it all goes. But yeah, definitely, definitely interesting when it comes to this. And, and we've got all kinds of information about it. And I think, you know, if you, the, you can go into it a lot deeper if people uh, want to. But uh, that's, I think, a really important thing for people to know and that development of just these two rivals coming together. That's a big deal. And it's a big deal on how we can do that. Um, let's, let's go on to a different thing here, too. We, we've got another thing to talk about. We've got two things that are big this week that we want to let everybody know about. And there's so much information to try to pack into about 10 minutes or 10 minutes as we coined it before. Uh, let's talk about uh, Facebook right now with an announcement that they have made. And this is something that's been available elsewhere, but now rolling into North America and, uh, and something that's uh, available as of this week. And it's part of their data transfer project. Now, this is the idea of, for a lot of people, it's owning your own data. So your data that you submit onto, say, Facebook, all that stuff that you've uploaded, all this stuff that's in there, that is that yours or does that belong to them? And that's kind of this concept. And this is something that Facebook announced that they're going to now allow you to upload your Facebook photos to another platform like Google Photos. That's something that hasn't been easily done before. And a lot of it is tried trying uh, Facebook essentially trying to avoid some maybe potential uh, judgments against them, uh, some different uh, rulings that could come forth. And so it's them saying, hey, no, this is your data. It's always been your data. Now you can go ahead and take it, uh, take it somewhere else. Yeah, that's fine. And so, they, but that's what it is. It's going to allow people to upload their photos uh, onto Google. I think it's an interesting development. They did say that going forward, uh, eventually you're going to be able to take your contacts off of there and be able to take this, this information that they're saying is yours and plug it in wherever you want. And, and I think that's a push that a lot of companies are going to be forced into making. Right. And, and I think for a long time, you, you, for, for many years, Facebook has kind of really been this walled garden, right? You put stuff into, into Facebook, into the big blue app, and you know, you, in order to move it onto some other site, whether it's you know, Flickr or Google Photos or, or anything else, it was, you had to re-upload it. So there's, it there was no real way to do that. And you're right. I think you, you hinted at it earlier. It's, it's a regulatory play. Uh, you know, as as we're you know, with the with the pandemic, twenty twenty has basically stalled any antitrust uh, investigations that that Congress or regulators may have looked at in terms of uh, in terms of Facebook. But it, there, it's still lingering, like the sort of Damocles over Facebook. And this is kind of you know, this could be a way to kind of really assuage it uh, and tell regulators, look, we're not holding on to things. And I think with this is this is also can be related to Mark Zuckerberg's whole push. Uh, I believe. It was early 2019 where he was saying, "Look, we're going to we're moving things into more. We're more about privacy now. We're more about protecting your and your individual uh, uh, data as opposed to kind of really uh, pushing everything out into public." Uh, so, but this is also uh, you know it's important to note that this uh, data portability um, project that Facebook is part of is is not is it, they voluntarily entered it into this kind of group that that is also founded by with members of Apple, Microsoft, Twitter and Google. So this is you know a, a data you know transfer you know conglomerate that 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 you have and you know this is you know a, this is certainly a good thing for people uh to to say look we don't want to have uh, our right. information stored on on Facebook. This does not include Instagram. Uh, this does not include WhatsApp. This does not include uh, Facebook Messenger so far. Uh, but of course, WhatsApp already has that da uh, data backup that you can push to Google Drive. Uh, Instagram, we'll see. Uh, but of course, with with Facebook having like two two plus two point five plus billion uh, monthly active users, I mean, there's a lot of data on Facebook, yeah. uh, the big blue app versus Instagram. So. You know, obviously, there's a big get to get, you know, to be able to download all your photos from Facebook and move it right into there. Because you think, bigger, I'm just going to throw albums of, of photos onto Facebook. You're not necessarily going to do that on Instagram. So whether or not that also includes, yeah, you know, photos true. that, you know, Greg, you, you know, you, I tag you in a photo. Could you take that and extract and extract that and put it into Google Photos? I don't know, but at least right now it is your individual photos, your individual videos. So. Uh, and then you get into more copywriting issues yeah. and blah, 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 and everything like that. But this is a, I think this is a good step forward. And, and again, one other thing to note, this is not the first uh, data uh, uh, portability uh, tool that Facebook has. They, they have their download your information. Of course, that came out uh, 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 in light of criticism that, it, that was levied against the company way back in the day. Yeah, 
True. I mean, we'll, and we'll have to see where this goes, but I think it's the first step in a, in a road, you know, and they did say that there's more coming when it comes to this, uh, but definitely in, in response to some of the different regulations that are going on, you know, in Europe and California when it comes to data privacy, we'll have to see where that happens. But something that I think people should be aware of, there's a lot to follow up on with that that everybody can do, of course, at Flipboard or Digital Trends. And also, this is a podcast. So not only the video that you're watching right now, we have an audio version that comes out every week. So wherever you get podcasts, go find Tech Briefs and hit subscribe. Listen to Ken and I. We'll help you out. Uh, Ken, as always, thank you so much for joining us. I'll talk to you next week. See you next week, Greg.